Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Pauline Drescher. I am the curator of the interactive program of the Netherlands Film Festival. And today I'm here to have a conversation with Julia Faxin. She is a Italian student, uh, just graduated at the Royal Academy of Arts in The Hague uh, at the department Nonlinear Narrative. And she made this beautiful film we can see here on the website in a flat version. Uh, the original application to the awards uh, process was a VR film and that's what we're going to talk about. And that's also the version Jury has seen. I've been thinking a lot about home, Italy, especially now that I'm not there. They say that sometimes to take distance it helps. I remember being in school at history class where I got to know that Italy was liberated from many external powers to be unified and become the nation state that we know today. Hi Julia, uh, we are going to talk about where Italy sleeps, uh, a very intriguing uh, virtual reality documentary about the colonial periods uh, of Italy and the colonization of uh, Eritrea. Uh, could you explain a little bit more uh, about the, the topic of this film uh, and why you wanted to make a project about this, this topic? Um, the colonial narrative, it's so intertwined still nowadays together with national identity and the creation of national identity in Italy. If we consider also, and especially in the case of Italy, that Italy is a very young, uh, in a very young country. It's a very young nation state. And it dates back to 1861. And a few years later, the establishment of this new state, the colonial campaign began. So more or less in the same years when the national identity of Italy was formed, colonial narrative was initiated as well. So it's very easy to see how these two events were intertwined together and how they inform each other, like the making of what does it mean to be Italian and the making of the other, it's, it's, it communicates by contrast. And I think the fact that this was never addressed throughout the Italian history and was never deconstructed, this explains a lot of the racism and the misconceptions that Italy still has. Italy was one of the last European powers to colonize part of the African territories. And the rhetoric at that time was that there could be done anything because there, there was nothing like nothing. But we pretty much know that nothingness cannot exist. It is the result of a limited perspective or severe denial. Italiani brava gente, the myth of the good Italian, is in fact the hardest to unfold. I mean, that is also what I got told in school, the few times that we were talking about colonialism. In fact, in Italy, no one talks about colonialism. I can imagine you, you had quite some obstacles. I mean, the, 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 the topic is not very easy. It's, it's complex. You had to film it in Eritrea. Uh, VR is not a, a medium we are all used at. Probably for you, it was also a, a new medium. So what was for you the, the, the meaning behind the choice to, to build this narrative in VR? I think the main reason that was driving my choice, it was the fact that I wanted to give the possibility to the viewer to choice, to choose like what they want to see. But also at the same time, for me, it was important not like to be quite open and quite transparent to the fact that as a director, I was deciding what to put the camera, when to turn it off, when to turn it off, what to portray. So for me to have this 360 situation where the person can actually see when I'm doing this action was an attempt also to 
discuss and challenge also a bit the VR preconception that it's uh, an objective way to narrate uh, a story, which is not, in fact. And you as a director wanted to have an influence where people were looking or not at all? I had to embrace the fact that people were looking where I didn't thought they were looking to. So also for subtitles, also for like, oh, when this person is saying this thing, I would li really love like a person would look at that. But it's not a case because it's 360 and uh, it depends where in the last scene the person is looking at. But you see, this is tricky now because to say that I didn't want to direct the gaze of the viewer in terms of 360 space, but I was putting the camera, so in a certain way, and I was directing the gaze of the person. You're also dreaming of working on an interactive version. Yeah. Um, if you are finished with the interactive version, is there a way we could watch this? Uh, I can leave my, my email and um, there can be like a mailing list because I think this is a longer project, so it will span within like a few months. So, yeah, great. We can put it in in the video and then people can yeah. email you and request an update. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Great. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Julia, for this uh, nice uh, conversation and, uh, well, congratulations again on the, the great documentary. Um, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from you more. <laughs>